Wow, what a welcome and a treat. Is this Voss for me? Am I the Voss? Okay, no. I might get thirsty though. Listen, it is an honor to be representing spiritual mothers in the house and online today, whether or not you have biological or not biological children. Um, as a woman, I believe that we are called to motherhood. It is interesting in the book of Judges that Deborah, though she is a prophetess and a judge, she refers to herself as mother. She said, until I, Deborah, a mother in Israel, arose, everything was still disconnected. Why did, she, why did she have to be a mother at that time? Israel needed a mother. She assembled them, and then they went and defeated the enemy. We're actually not talking about that today, but that would be a good topic. Let's pray. Father, <laughs> thank you so much that your presence is so tangible in this place. You're such a good, good father, and we just honor you. And we're asking that you would help us to fulfill the prayer that Jesus prayed in John 17, that we would be one. I'm asking so much, Lord, from my heart of hearts that you would unite our heart to fear your name, that we would recognize whose we are and what we're called to in this time assembled together and that we would bring glory to your name, the way you've designed us to. We would understand the unity that you foreordained that we walk in it, in Jesus' name. You know, Mark and I, uh, you could say amen. Okay, okay, that means you're agreeing with me. That means we're on the same page. Mark and I, my husband and I, have been through many states. We've moved over many years, and, and um, it's kind of sad to say, but I've seen the same epidemic throughout the years, and uh, that is autoimmune disease. You guys have all heard of it probably in the medical arena. Autoimmune disease is on the rise, Doctors don't know what causes it. They don't know what cures it. They only have some medications that kind of offset the symptoms. But there's a parallel to this. And today, that's what I want to address. There's a parallel of autoimmune disease in the body of Christ. I call it comparisons disease. It's been wreaking havoc for far too long. But today, we actually do have the cause and we do have the cure, but it requires every single member of the body to get together to bring it about. Woo, here we go. Are you guys ready for this? All right. I don't know if this has ever happened to you. It's quite embarrassing, but I'm going to reveal it anyway. I fell asleep one day on my arm. Not the typical way, not like sideways or on my front, but actually my arm was up behind my head like this, and I fell asleep, and I woke up, and I don't know why it was so difficult to get up, but it was really hard. I was like, what is going on? Like, I'm so confused, and then I saw it out of the corner of my eye, and I was like, I did what you guys would do. I was like, I grabbed that thing and threw it as far and fast for me as I possibly could. It was, it was mine. Actually, it was attached, and I had no idea. My own arm. My own arm. I attacked my own arm. Why? I didn't know it was mine. I didn't recognize it. I couldn't feel it. I wasn't really connected because it was asleep. Why am I talking about this? This is how autoimmune disease works. Let me tell you, autoimmunity, if you don't know, we'll put it on the screen for you, refers to the failure of the human body's immune system to recognize its own cells and tissues as self. Ooh, autoimmune disease. Next slide. A condition in which the body's immune system mistakes its own healthy tissues as foreign and attacks them, affecting many other parts of the body with inflammation. This develops into chronic inflammation. What is that? It's when the body just keeps on sending out all of these inflammatory cells and there's not even any danger. It's stranger danger, stranger danger. And it builds up all these walls and it separates itself. Why? It's trying to protect itself from itself. Let's just seal off for a moment. Let it sink in. <laughs> I actually call the comparisons disease by its medical term, it's comparatosis. You'll, you'll see it on the screen. It's compared to us. Don't look it up on your screens. You're not going to find it there, yeah. No, I made that up. But it's real. It's real. And you'll see the definition right here. It's a debilitating, undermining, autoimmune disease in the body of Christ caused by a constant, often unrealized, tendency to compare ourselves to others, including God and man. This goes way back, you guys. By comparison, you know, by comparison I'm re referring to uh, an unhealthy comparison. You have to know that, right? But this goes all the way back. We can track it, comparatosis, back to its first record in the book of Genesis. And we see it in the Garden of Eden. Comparison was introduced by a sly serpent's simple suggestion that Eve would become like God if only she ate from the forbidden tree. The idea that someone was greater 
separated them in their thoughts from being one with their creator. Isn't that wild? All of a sudden, them versus him. Comparison requires us to separate whoever or whatever is being compared, even for the moment of comparison. They forgot their connection. He made them in his image for himself, unique and incomparable to any other one of his creations. Man took the bait and was caught in the trap of comparing himself with God. Comparison and comparatosis continue to spread throughout the ages. We see it go from Cain with Abel, Esau with Jacob, Leah and Rachel. Who's got more kids? Happy Mother's Day. (laughs) Peter with John, Martha with Mary, the older brother. Too common among siblings in the Bible. You know, as I was studying for this, I was like, how many siblings were actually among the 12? Does anybody know how many pairs? I think we think, oh, I think I know two. There are three pairs of siblings. That's half the disciples are siblings. And we don't really think about it much, but Andrew is the one who went and got Peter and said, hey, I want to introduce you to the Messiah. Brings him to the Messiah. Jesus swoops him up into the inner three, puts him at the top, Peter, James, and John from that point forward. What happened to Andrew? I mean, can you, I mean, I don't hear much about them. I don't know that they were comparing one another, but I do know the disciples as a whole constantly got caught up in comparatosis. Why? They were like, who's the greatest? Who's the greatest? It was constant. I have an idea that the enemy tried to sow discord there among the siblings for sure. Why don't you be like your older brother? (laughs) Well, or your younger brother, right? Let's look at the word here. 2 Corinthians 10 verse 12. This is key. We do not dare to classify or compare ourselves with some who commend themselves. When they measure themselves by themselves and compare themselves with themselves, they are not wise. We should just stay away from it altogether. We already know it's not wise, right? What does comparison do? Comparison creates disunity. Compromising immunity and opening the door to autoimmunity and disease within the body. The disconnect makes it really difficult to distinguish between family or friend or foe. Why? Because I'm moving away from you. The further I get from you, the less I recognize that we're actually actually on the same team, in the same body. Let's fast forward to 2023. Okay, comparatosis outlasted and even gained strength during the pandemic. Think about this. Daily overexposure to the desocializing social platforms. Does this sound familiar? I was just about to put my phone down and I saw it. So and so added to their story. Again, they did. I don't even know how they did it. I went from the bathroom to the kitchen and they've added to their story and they were in two different states. Am I even making a difference? Is my life actually adding to the fabric of society at all? How in the world am I going to keep up with the Joneses? I can't keep up with the Anisons and the Eversons and the many Yankos up here. How in the world? How? I mean, did I even have a life before I could watch a play-by-play of every day-to-day in my over 4K list of people that I somehow now have time to track? (laughs) Please know I'm not irritated. I love you guys. I forgot to say this. I love Jesus. I love his word. I love his body. I love you all. This is not me getting angry. This is just Mama Debs. All right. There is a cure for this, by the way. There's a cure from, for comparatosis. And I believe you can find it on aisle 14. <laughs> all right. I don't know about that. But I do know that you do need to go back and listen to that message from last week because it was fire. It was so, so, so good, as is every message that comes forth. 1 Corinthians 12. Let's go ahead and throw that on the screen. This is going to make some sense here. Just as a body, though one has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. Now, if the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I don't belong to the body, it would not, for that reason, stop being a part of the body. If the ear should say, well, because I'm not an eye, I don't belong to the body, it would not, for that reason, be, stop being part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, first of all, Monsters, Inc., right? <laughs> Weird. Where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has placed the parts 
Who? God. God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, that includes you, includes me, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. <laughs> Dad jokes don't work on Mom's Day, do they? Okay. All right. The head, the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you either. All right. Turn to your neighbor and say this. I don't need you. <laughs> okay. Other neighbor? Other neighbor? I don't need you. No? No? It's weird, right? Why does it seem wrong? Because it is. <laughs> it's wrong. True or false? All we need is Jesus. Bam. False. Listen, we need him. He's the head. We are dependent on the head. Without him, we're nothing. But we actually also need the rest of the body. I cannot function correctly without the rest of the body. I am a part, not the whole. Are we all the same? No. Clearly not. <laughs> We're each a unique facet. Is it okay to notice the differences? Of course it is. It's the difference between honor and comparison. Are we all equal? Silence. Actually, we are all equal to the one who paid the price. He paid the same for all of us. His body, his blood, his life. We all have equal access in relationship to him, equal access to favor because of his finished work. Guess what else though? We are to have equal concern for each other. Let's go back in the word and dig in. Mm, got your Mother's Day meal up here. <laughs> you might have to get a doggy bag. Okay. Um, <laughs> let's go ahead and uh, look at 1 Corinthians 12, 24. You can put that on the screen. Uh, you know, every man for himself does not fit in the body of Christ. That mentality, right? I know we're all about our Father's business, but without the rest of the body, it's gonna be harder to get it done. But God has put the body together, giving greater honor to the parts that lacked it, so there should be no division in the body, but that his parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Now you are the body of Christ and each one of you is a part of it. I would suggest this. If we're not actually able to suffer with a suffering member, there's a disconnect. Like my arm that I was sleeping on. When my foot suffers, my whole body actually suffers, not out of just compassion, but out of connection. Why? It's my foot. It hurts. The rest of my body is affected. We had a guest in our house a few weeks back and she injured her toe very bad. Everything for the next three days revolved around that toe. Not even just her body. I mean, the rest of the house was kind of like, ooh, how's your toe? Is everything okay? Right? Tip and toe and all this stuff, right? She had a lot going on and she did not have the option of just go, oh man, this is in the way. I'm just gonna cut it off, stick it over here. I'll come back for it later. I love parables. Woo! For those who are hungry. We can't just cut our toe off. The rest of her body had to rally around that toe until it was ready and the whole body could go forward. No toe left behind. <laughs> Listen, if we're not automatically suffering again when another member of the body suffers or rejoicing when another member is rejoicing, I mean automatically, we're disconnected. Something's wrong. Perhaps we have comparatosis. I know. I know it. You know what? You know what? I'm sorry. I'm repping my husband up here too. He does those dad jokes all the time. I need a visual. It's clearly, it's not quite as clear as it needs to be. I need a visual. Can someone give me a hand up here? Oh. Ooh. Hey. Oh, well, all right. All right. Oh. Okay. Okay. Oh. All right. Well. Phew. That reminds me of Larry LaPrize. Do you guys know Larry LaPrize? You do, do you know, do you know the Hokey Pokey? Yes. You guys, if you know, you know, yeah. Larry, Larry LePrize created a Hokey Pokey. He, he passed away last week, I heard. And uh, I guess the funeral was beautiful. Uh, they had a little struggle when they were trying to put his body in the casket. They, you know, put the right arm in and... Okay, 
All right, well, if God put this body together, <laughs> why are we looking at it like this right now? <laughs> Listen, I want to blame the enemy for this. I really, 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 really do. But, but to be honest, it was just his suggestion, right? If we don't follow it, then whose fault is it? I mean, it's up to us whether this remains like this. Think about the word. He can't succeed. Think about the word unless we're ignorant of his devices and we give him place. Why? We have authority. But my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge or distracted by comparatosis. And then you see this. Again, I just really want to blame him. The enemy, there's nothing new needed. Divide and conquer. Undermine the unity. Disconnect by distinctions. We step into this trap of compar comparison and it's like, boom. You guys think about this. All racism, <laughs> sexism, ageism, classism, all the isms, all the better thans, less thans, all stem from comparison. All of them. Whew, if he can get me to think I'm a grasshopper facing a giant or bicker against my brother or sister over who's better, he beats me that time but we're becoming aware of his devices. We're not ignorant. I want to blame him for the dismembered body, but we're dissing the members. Woo, I want to blame him for all of our playground fights online for the world to see, even channels devoted to ranking preachers from best to worst. Which worship leader is now American's idol? Biggest loser of the anointing. Who fell down and broke their crown? It must be exposed. Who wants your money? It must be canceled. Well, <laughs> listen, look at this. Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. And by exposing, constantly exposing the hand, constantly exposing our own body, we're playing into his hand. How does Jesus destroy the works of the devil? By going about doing good and healing all. Yeah. Not by tearing down and exposing faults. Right? Is it possible that we are responsible for continuing to break apart the same body that Jesus' body was broken for to make whole? Communion will never be the same. <laughs> a kingdom divided against itself, the word says, cannot stand, right? But the body here, divided against itself, also can't stand. Sure can't move forward. There's no progress made. 1 Corinthians 1, 10. I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree with one another in what you say and that there be no divisions among you but that you be perfectly united in mind and thought. My brothers and sisters, some from Chloe's household have informed me that there are quarrels among you. Man, have you ever thought about, what are those quarrels about? About the new building and what carpet color they're picking and the classroom space and all those, you know, all the stuff that people know. What I mean is this, this these are the quarrels right here. <laughs> One of you says, I follow Paul. Another says, I follow Apollos. Another Cephas. Still another, I follow Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Were you baptized in the name of Paul? <laughs> Comparison is a trap of the enemy to immobilize the body and keep its members in the flesh as mere men incapable of making any spiritual progress. Comparison is a trap of the enemy. When we know it's a trap, we'll stop falling in it, right? It's so when we don't see it, we fall in it. Let's expose him. It's a trap of the enemy to immobilize the body, keep its members from in the flesh as mere men, incapable of making any spiritual progress. 1 Corinthians 3, verse 1. Brothers and sisters, I could not address you as people who live by the Spirit, but as people who are still worldly. Some scripture says fleshly. We can put that on the screen. It's 1 Corinthians 3. Mere infants in Christ. I gave you milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for it. Indeed, you are still not ready. You are still worldly. When I hear the word worldly, 
I think degradation. I think like blackest night, living in darkness, all in the middle of the night, all in the great, just the grossest areas. You know what I'm talking about? Like super trapped in addiction and all the other kind of stuff. That's what I think he's talking about. You're worldly. You got to get your act cleaned up. Everybody get free from all that superficial sin. No. Are we ready to find out what infantile behavior is? <laughs> Since there is jealousy and quarreling among you, are you not worldly? Oh my gosh, are you kidding? None of the other bad stuff? Jealousy and quarreling. Do you know what jealousy does to the body? Proverbs 14, 30 is one of my favorite verses. It says, the calm and undisturbed heart and mind are the life and health of the body. But jealousy and envy are rottenness in the bones. In the bones. You know what's in the bones? Marrow. You know what's in the marrow? Immune system. Exactly. The immune system. The marrow is a nest for the activity of our immune cells. What are we talking about? We're talking about autoimmunity. Just jealousy can turn an otherwise healthy immune system into rottenness. The word also says good news brings healing to the bones. But what if someone else gets the good news that you were wanting? What then? If you consider that person as part of the same body, you'll rejoice with it. But if you compare yourself, jealousy could twist their good news into decay. He says, to continue the verse in 1 Corinthians 3, 1 through 4, are you not acting like mere humans? For when one says, I follow Paul, and another, I follow Apollos, are you not mere human beings? Following individuals or having allegiance to one side over in the body of Christ, we've forgotten. There are no sides in the body of Christ. There's one, his. I mean, it's pretty ridiculous if you think about it. If I started to have an arm wrestling match with myself right now, who are you gonna vote for, right or left? Right. Oh, right. <laughs> Am I lopsided? Okay. Uh, <laughs> no, it's ridiculous, right? But we do it all the time. Hey, <laughs> who wants the upper hand with Paul's team? No? You wanna get a leg up with Cephas over here? No? Okay, I see those are dry. All right. But what does this look like today? Is Bogdan in the house? Yeah. All right, Bogdan's in the house. Bogdan found out that he was speaking like within days of the times that he spoke. And I actually found out right before him that I was speaking today. He came in here, he tore the roof off by the spirit of God. And they, I don't even know how they repaired it, to be honest with you. I'm like, I don't know if we're gonna have church next week because it was so alive. Every single week, it's like this, the KM speaker lineup is just like an ongoing conference, is it not? Yeah. Aren't you glad that KM doesn't participate in Last Preacher's Standing? That would sure be ugly, wouldn't it? How weird and strange and awkward would it be for, well, I, I, I'm with Roman. I'm with Roman. Oh, and I'm with, uh, fill in the blank. I mean, honestly, as I look around right now, every single one of you is a leader. This body would be shattered to smithereens if we did that here. But we don't do that here because we're not ignorant of his devices. We don't play that game, right? Come on. 1 Corinthians 3, 5 through 7. See, the reason we don't play it is because none of us act as though or know or think for a second that we gave ourselves what we have. Anything that we have is an entrustment. We're, we're servants and stewards. Right? Here we go. 1 Corinthians 3, 5 through 7. What, after all, is Apollos? And what is Paul? Only servants. This is Paul writing. Only servants through whom you came to believe. As the Lord has assigned to each his task, I planted the seed, Apollos watered it, but God has been making it grow. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, but only God. Say that after me. Only God who makes things grow. We're all just doing our part and it doesn't matter whether or not it's planting, whether or not it's watering, whether or not it's hoeing, whether or not it's any of these things, God is the only one who is making it grow without him and it's not going anywhere. Earlier, I mentioned the disciples got stuck in comparatosis. You know, twice in the book of Luke alone, they're arguing over who's the greatest. 
And the last time they got into this big fight, you know, I, as I saw it, I'm like, man, they're not disciples. They're jockeys. A bunch of jockeys jockeying for position, you know, <laughs> until they became apostles. That's what I kind of renamed them and probably all of us too. But they start fighting at the last meal that Jesus has on the earth with them over who's greatest. <laughs> School was almost over for them. Huh, KMSM? Graduation's right around the corner. Hey, next week. But they're still in this place, and Jesus is right there with them. He washes their feet, tells them that he's going to be handed over and betrayed that night. Hello, ding, 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 pay attention. Someone who is speaking only by the Spirit has some spiritual insight right now if we're paying attention. And guess what happens? He says, I'm going to be handed over and betrayed. Comparatosis sets in. They immediately go, who's the worst here? <laughs> who's the one who could do that, right? Is it me? Is it you? Surely it's not me. Lord, who is it? I don't know who it is. And they get into this thing. And it flips from that argument. Go look at it in Luke 22. We're going to go there in a second. It flips from who's the worst to who's the greatest. And all the while, the enemy is at the table, operating in Judas and distracting them, getting them out of the spirit and into the flesh. Jesus is pointing at how the enemy is going to come after him, exactly the entrance and what's happening. He even tells them. I was wondering, how do they not see it? He's like, it's this one. That one, bing, 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 you know. They don't see it. I'm like, how do they miss that? And I see this because they're, they're doing this. Come here, let's see if we can. Luke 22. How many times do we miss the spirit when we're caught in the flesh? <sighs> Verse 24 says, A dispute also rose among them as to which of them was considered to be the greatest. Of course, they're going to decide that. Jesus said to them, The kings of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those who exercise authority over them call themselves benefactors. But you are not to be like that. Instead, the greatest among you should be like the youngest, and the one who rules like the one who serves. For who is greater, the one who is at table with you or the one who serves? Is it not the one who is at table? But I, this is Jesus speaking, am among you as one who serves. Roman uh, shared a quote last week. I was out of town, but I caught it online and it, it was so good. It just stuck with me. I just couldn't even get away from it. He said, don't use your position for people to serve you. Use your position to serve people. At his own going away party, Jesus, his last dinner, what does he do? He starts serving. He starts washing feet. He starts demonstrating this is how the kingdom works. This is how the kingdom works. This is how the kingdom works. That night, he's on his knees <laughs> washing their feet. Where do we see him when we look at him? All kinds of places, right? Because he's everywhere. We're beholding him today. We're worshiping today. We're beholding him. We want to get closer to his face. We want to see him. We want to know what we're seeing. But the more we behold our king the more we become like the servant of all. Right? If we really see him, we see his character. We see his nature. We see what's going on. The more we behold our king, the more we become like the servant of all. Let's look at 1 Corinthians 4, verse 7. You can see that on the screen too. For who regards you as superior? What do you have that you did not receive? If you did not, or if you did receive it rather, why do you boast as if you had not received it? Look at 1 Peter 4, 10. As each one, and that means everybody in this room right now, has received, none of us earned it, none of us chose it even. As each one of you has received a special gift, employ it in making sure that you go as fast as you can from being the ankle to the shoulder. Right? No? Rise to the top. Climb over whoever you can to get there. No. Employ it in serving one another as good stewards of the manifold grace yes. of God. Yes. I think I'm going to ask Joseph to come up and give me another hand to put this body back together here. It does take everybody's help, by the way. If one person just tries to put all the pieces back where they belong, it doesn't always work. <laughs> right? We'll get part of it mended. We'll get our part mended. But it takes all of us. Ephesians 4 verse 15. You can see that on the screen also. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body. I think you've got to start up high, like this way. There we go. Yeah, there we go. In <laughs> every respect. Hey, before you think you're going to buy one of these, by the way, I want a mannequin for my house. Do you? 
Do you want to wake up every morning and forget that you have a body in your house that, that belongs to you and you don't know it's yours? Goes with the message, but it's frightening. It's frightening. Okay. <laughs> we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head. That is Christ. From him, and the reason that his head is not on stage here is because his head is not here. His head is on, in heaven. He sees everything. He knows everything. We're his body on the earth. This is why it was better. He went away in one physical body, became many in one body. He gets a lot more done through all of us, as long as we're connected to the head. From him, the whole body joined and held together by every supporting ligament grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. If body parts are unengaged or sleeping or offended or disconnected or dismembered, it's going to take us a lot longer to see the results of that song we sang this morning, Come Lord Jesus Come. Why? Because he's not coming back for a dismembered bride or body. He's not coming back for the one in shambles. He's coming back for a pure holy, spotless, working, operating. That's how he's coming. He's coming for us, the whole, the whole bride, the whole body, the whole church. Amen? And I love, I love KM for this. Everywhere I go, and this is so, I'm so thankful to be at home here. I'm so thankful. Everywhere I go, I, when I talk about when people go, oh, what's it like up in, in Washington now? What's it like up in the PNW? What's it like in the community? I say, you know what? There's such a, my, my constant communication is that everybody's eyes are on him. And that's why his presence is so thick because all of our eyes are on him and we're okay to be doing different things and being different members. There's such a deep resounding yes here. I would say it's such a deep surrender. I don't know anybody that I've talked to that I couldn't say, hey, would you drop everything right now? Go to a foreign field and lay your life down for Jesus. It's so deep. People are like, yes. I mean, sober. They're not like, yes, I'll go and even die with you. I'm not saying like, yes is beyond. I'm just saying what the Lord wants. I'm surrendered. It's beautiful. In this body right now, Every joint being and giving their supply is going to look entirely different from the person next to them. This is also important because when Jesus said, hey, I'm going to go here and this is what's going to happen to me, Peter signed up for more. I'm coming and even dying with you. Yeah. No, he, he's like, I actually didn't assign you that. <laughs> so we also got to watch overstepping what he's asking. But here, one is raising children. Another is going to the nation's. Another is funding their mission. Another is bringing reformation to the marketplace. Another made a, an app called United Hive. Another is writing a book. Another is equipping a local part of the body to do the work of ministry. Another is studying to be well prepared for what God calls them out to do. Our response to this, yes to our part and amen to everyone else. You know, some parts right now in the body are resting. And you know what this rest does? It gives permission for other body members to go, it's okay to rest. <laughs> it's healthy. It's restorative. Come on. How do you know if you have comparatosis? There are some common symptoms. I'm going to rattle them off. You might take, take note of them if this is you and it resonates. You get a distaste when hearing mention of any specific person, people group, or age group. Nothing even about them, just, just the person or the people group or the age group. Gen Z comes up in conversation. Oh. Or whatever it is that happens, right? We love Gen Z here, by the way. I'm just saying, whatever that is. Sudden, unexplainable feelings of irritation, unhappiness, or depression when someone else is rewarded, promoted, or experiences success. Relapses in insecurity, jealousy, pride, and envy. Unexplained, unjustifiable anger and rage. <laughs> Selfish ambition rising up. Cycles of criticism and judgment. Inability to let things go. Unforgiveness. Belief that God is unfair. That's a big one. Anxiety, drivenness, FOMO, fear of missing out, default to suspicion of others instead of believing the best. Like I said before, there is a cure. There is a cure. But if you've experienced these symptoms, maybe there's actually like you've been diagnosed with a medical condition in the natural and you've had these symptoms and you're getting medicated but you're not seeing any relief. Maybe it's not a natural root. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's something completely spiritual. And by identifying it today, you can be completely set free. I'm believing there will be physical healing and soul healing in this house today, 100%. Just by receiving the word, his word was sent to heal us and deliver us from our destructions. I don't have to lay hands. I don't have to call out with the gift of the spirit, just the word. There's a cure. We're gonna go ahead and put this up on the screen. Cleansing the body of autoimmunity. Number one, we have to identify Christ as Lord. 
Go back two weeks and listen to Vic's message. So powerful. Every part of our life has to be submitted to his lordship. Any part that is not, we're susceptible to comparatosis. For sure. Number two, identify as a member belonging to his body. Number three, identify the true enemy. No longer ignorant of his devices. Remember, this is the whole thing with autoimmune disease. We don't know who the enemy is. As soon as we identify him and get rid of him, we know how to keep him out and we partner together. There's no access. That's the fourth part of this. Unite and fight together and never against each other. Let's look at Romans 12, four and five on the screen. For just as each one of us has one body with many members, these members do not all have the same function. So in Christ, though many form one body and each member belongs to all the others. Can you turn to your neighbor right now and say, I belong to you? (laughs) Turn to your other neighbor and say, I need you. (laughs) Your other neighbor, you need me. Feels weird, but we need each other. We belong to one another. So what I have right now is I have an example of what happens when we come together and we identify as members and we all get on board with one unified vision and goal and we've targeted the enemy and we know where he enters and we know how to take him out. This is, this is a video, actually, it's, it's representing a kingdom that is actually ruled by a queen in honor of Mother's Day. Let's take a look at that video. It's short, it's like a minute and 15 seconds. while they're getting that up and running? Hmm? No, I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna talk about it. I wanna see it. I like visuals. My husband likes visuals, so we're, oh. <laughs> so we know what the cure, how to cure. I'm gonna go into prevention. Do we have it? Are we gonna have it? Yes? Let's do it. That's a hornet. Then one is caught. It's the signal the others have been waiting for. Not on my watch. Mm. They're literally cooking him right now. Toast that hornet. Come on. We're a colony. We're a body. We're the church. When we come together and we see one member that begins to suffer, we're like, not on my watch. We join together and we drive that enemy out. So how do we prevent him from coming back? Stay in community. Refuse isolation. Foster integration and connection. Refuse isolation. He who separates himself seeks his own desire. He quarrels against all sound wisdom, the word says. We will always better represent Christ to the world when we're together than when we're alone. There's a fuller picture, always. We will only be the best when each fully owns their part. Unity kills autoimmunity. Let's keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. Number two, be quick to forgive. I do want to mention this, it's going to be brief, but I could have just gone into this and shared this the entire message. There's a danger if we leave this untreated. If you look at the life of Saul and David, and I don't have time to go into all of it, but I just want to nutshell it for you, everybody here, because it's so sad. And it's, it's stemming from comparison. David 
went from friend to foe as Saul spiraled into delusion after hearing one hit song. Saul has slain his top thousands and David his ten thousands. <laughs> Literally, that was all he heard and everything snapped. Everything David had done up to that point that was of, of a betterment to Paul that was on his behalf, all of a sudden became a threat. He started looking at him with an evil eye. Competition, comparatosis set in. And though David never did one thing against him going forward, he considered him his enemy. It got worse and worse and worse. He actually, <laughs> David's anointing on his life and what God did through him delivered Saul from that spirit earlier. The same anointing, the same presence of God, the same anointing, you guys, the same presence. If you walk in here and you don't feel it that day, you're irritated by people on their face up here, it does something else inside, something's wrong. There's healing for that. The same presence spun Saul into a tailspin where he could not collect himself. It actually drove him mad. And the rest of his life, he just wanted to do nothing but murder David. And he spent the rest of his life after him. I believe there's gonna be immediate healing for many right now. We're gonna join in communion. Did you all receive that when you came in, the elements? So I want us to stand up. And if you feel like you want to or need to, because here's the thing, where's, where's forgiveness? I mean, it's in Jesus, but without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin, right? There's no remission. So the blood of Jesus is coursing through his body unless we decide, well, we don't really need to live with that one. And we start cutting the body apart. We start cutting people off. Before we decide we can do the rest of our life here without that person, let's decide if we can do or want to do it without our foot or our hand. Is it worth choking the blood flow in this body because that person doesn't deserve when Jesus has his arms outstretched saying, Father, forgive them? They know not what they do. Do you know there was never any blood on Jesus' hands until he took the nails? He loved him to the end. He washed the feet of the one who was going to take his life and he knew it. I'm gonna just lead us in a prayer of repentance right now. If you agree with your heart, please join, in, join with me. But on the last night of his life, Jesus washed all their feet, gave himself in communion. This is common union. This is one body. This is one blood for all of them. And then he instructed them to serve one another, to come together. And he said, do this in remembrance of me. Come together. Don't let my body be scattered. Come together. Remember what I did so you're never separated from the body. And then he prayed they would be one. Please, Lord, help us be an answer to that prayer today. If there's anyone you're not okay sitting down at the table right now and having dinner with, you might actually be sitting next to them at the marriage supper of the Lamb. So I suggest that you consider whether you might wanna reach out and say, I'm sorry. You don't even have to go into all the whys. Just text, why. I'm just sorry. Why? I don't want to keep the blood flow choked between us. I don't want numbness. I want good circulation. Yes. I'm supposed to be one. Father God, I'm just asking right now that you would forgive us all in any way for comparing ourselves with others. We know it's not wise. We recognize the enemy and we will no longer be subject to his devices. We will no longer compare our capacities. We will not compare ourselves with others' assignments. We will not compare ourselves with other members who gets to, who's raised up, who's put down. We'll no longer put them in a ring with each other. We purpose to grow up and trust you to perfect us in your love. I want to look at 1 Corinthians. Eleven, twenty-three. For, for I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, in the night in which he betr was betrayed, 
<laughs> they keep bringing this up. This is Paul, by the way, who got this revelation. On the night he was betrayed, it was important to say that. When he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, actually, we're gonna stop right there. Father, the body was broken. Jesus, you broke your body for us that we could be one bread, one loaf. We're no longer comparing ourselves. We already said that we will not. We will not. We refuse to. So we receive your body broken for us and we purpose to be a part of making yours whole and be an answer to your prayer that we would be one in Jesus' name. And you can just go ahead and partake of the bread. In the same way he took the cup also after supper saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Father, we freely receive the blood shed for us and we freely release it to the rest of the body. We purpose to keep the mercy flowing by the blood of Christ in his body. We will never short circuit that flow. We will not withhold forgiveness, but freely give it as we freely received it. We let go and release our offenders from any penalty of our judgment. And we will never compare ourselves with another of your parts and offend our maker. We will not contribute to disunity in the body, but we'll judge and discern the body rightly. Let's go ahead and partake. Thank you, Lord. Now we're gonna have our leadership team come up and if any of you needs, anyone needs specific prayer, you just wanna take time in his presence, just reflect. There was a lot that was dished out today. Again, I'm believing it's gonna go with you. Some of you are gonna take it home with you and it's gonna come back later. But please stick around if you need prayer, we wanna to minister to you. We're gonna go back into worship right now. Thank you for joining King Movement Online. I pray and hope that that sermon impacted you deeply. I would love if you shared this with a few friends and family. And before you go, don't forget to subscribe. See you next week.